Yo, what's up everyone? Hello, hello. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Welcome back to Dojo. Happy Friday. Looks like we're okay. Everything is going to be okay. Okay, hopefully the computer holds up. <laughs> like, putting my laptop to the test. Hey, Trey, how's it going? Just getting started here. Should be analyzing your own games. True, true. Well, you know, tonight might be kind of a chill stream. So, um, I've been seeing some Twitch streams where it's just like a person quietly working. <laughs> it's like the idea is like, just like use me as a little as a background. So I think it's kind of cool. But uh, what games do you have to analyze? Did you play a tournament uh, recently? Yeah, work together. Exactly. I feel like a lot of people might be might be into that. Several dojo classical games to look at. Nice, nice. Very cool. How are you liking the dojo classical? Is it uh hard to schedule games or do you, are you normally normally happy with it? G4 would be equal. Well, maybe not so simple. Take, take, here. And that goes back some, I don't know, knight f6, knight h6. Yeah, I just like two spots. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, a lot of people really like the team aspect, you know, it adds, it adds stakes to the situation, but I get it. It uh, can also add some stress. Okay, well, feel free to just like watch and chill, whatever. Uh, I'm going to be analyzing this game for a bit. And um, yeah, if people have questions, I'm happy to answer. <laughs> At some point, I'll maybe we'll go through it a little, a little more concretely. Um, but for right now, I'm kind of just still, still analyzing this one. Um, is this the same opponent as round nine of national? Yes, it is actually. I played this kid um, twice. So I played him in both tournaments. This first one was round four, and then I played him in round nine. Yeah. And both times I, I was fortunate to have white. He's a King's Indian player uh, like me. So I felt like I had some edge because it's like I understand what he wants <laughs> with black. You know, I get it. Uh, but what, I feel like I had I have more experience in these positions, so both games I felt pretty good about. Especially the round nine game, actually, I think was maybe my best game of the whole trip. Um, this game I was reasonably happy with, though there were definitely some some interesting moments. That's cool, Trey. That's cool. Oh, so you're doing a lot of opening stuff because you're preparing for the opponents. Yeah, but I mean, I think 
that's uh um I don't know, it's one of the cool things about having like games to prepare for like when you prepare for someone you really you end up learning a lot because it's like you know you're gonna get it over the board, right? So you're like really it's not the same as just like randomly studying some opening because you might get it some it's like you know you're gonna have it, so you're like you're really focused on it. So I feel like it can be helpful, especially if you look at the middle games, you know. Yeah, Neve, actually he uh I'm the one that deviated. So in this first game, both games went like this. I played d5 here um, because I just wanted to try this setup. Basically, it's like kind of like Petrosian system, um, except Black hasn't committed to castling yet. Normally, Black will have castled already, um, and White also hasn't committed. To, well, that's normal for Petrosian system, but. My idea was definitely to try and castle queenside. Um, but then in our second game, I played bishop e3 here. Just to mix it up, just because I thought this was, okay, a, a different move, but uh, another way to kind of play the position. And then he castled, and then I went deep. This was our second game. Um, and then we went for this position. Where again I tried to uh, castle queenside. I just feel like that's kind of the uh, more aggressive way to deal with the king's Indian. It's like you you play an approach where you're going for queenside castles, and then you can try to attack black on the king side. Although in our second game I ended up winning on um, the queen side, so yeah, I felt like. The opening wasn't perfect, but yeah, I felt like I played the middle game well. Uh, but yeah, essentially we got like a very similar idea um, or structure here. So it's kind of happy to enter it again. Yeah, definitely at some point you want to focus on studying middle games because there'll be lots of middle games that you just get over and over again and you really want to be familiar with the key ideas. In fact, yeah, both of these Kings Indian games, I feel like I didn't exactly win the opening battle, but I was definitely a lot more comfortable with the middle game and like the middle game transitions. Okay. Um, so yeah, I haven't really like fully analyzed this game yet. So this isn't gonna be exactly like Recap City. Um, but hey, Baymon, thanks for the bits. Um, but I'll kind of take you guys through the game and we'll we'll analyze it side by side. If that's cool. So this was all all book. White has a pretty um, classic setup here. I went kind of early d5. So I want to play queen c2, and um, I don't want to allow any kind of he takes d4 is where my knight's going to be hanging. So um, eventually white has to play d5 here. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe I could have just played queen c2. Actually, this would have been a real... I just realized this would have been the correct approach. Because if black castles... Can I go d5 here? Knight c5. I guess it wouldn't be super simple. I was hoping to just get some kind of h3 system where black has committed the king. But still knight h5. It'd be a typical king's Indian. Okay, anyway. Opening nuance. Um, I play d5 here. Knight c5, queen c2. He goes a5, which I think is a good move. And I went bishop e3. So my idea with this one, actually, if black allows, is to take on c5. Like, if black goes knight g4 here, I would take. And uh, the old wisdom is that these positions aren't really anything special for white, especially if black can get the knight to d6. And I think that's kind of generally true. Like, if black can get the knight here, it's, it's going to be quite a nice position. But... Um, 
I feel like it's not so simple. Like h3, let's say castles, queen e7, king b1, castles, g4, knight e8. Yeah, engines seem to um, be pretty happy about this for white. So rook g1, knight d6, h4. Yeah, we can see, I mean, it's like, it's a lot of positional pressure. It's a lot of light square stuff. A lot of times white wants to play like g5, knight h2, bishop g4. Trade the light squared bishops, and then black is just left with this dud. Kind of long term. Um, why do you want to give up the e3 bishop? It's not that we like want to give it up. It's more just that this structure seems to leave black with a bad uh, dark squared bishop themselves. So it's more about trying to trade everything off. Like this bishop usually gets to g4 and well, that's the idea, playing against black's bishop. Um, but of course, it's still still double edged. But there have been some games like this where white like castles and goes like king b1, a3, king a2, just kind of tucks the king away and then it's a close position, you know, so you just kind of, you play with the knights. You play with the knights in the close position. So that's kind of the idea. And then if knight h5, I'll, I'll take as well. Um, but kid played b6, which kind of, uh, kind of stops the idea. But on the other hand, now it's actually a little bit harder for black to create queenside counterplay because now they don't really have the c6 break. Because then white takes and black would really want to take back with the pawn in order to be able to control um, some, some light squares. So h3, because now knight g4 would be annoying. And... Yeah, I was hoping for castles, if I remember correctly, because then I could go g4. And I thought this is actually a very good version for white, because here we're getting this like typical like Makaganov system with h3. White's going to castle queenside, go knight d2 somewhere. And in those positions, black doesn't usually want to play b6. Black wants c6 so that they can get the queenside play. So there's a big risk for black of ending up just without counterplay here if they're not careful. Um, so he goes bishop d7, which I think is actually a very good move because he's staying flexible. And if I go g4, he can play h5. And then we get some very close position like this, which I think would be super unclear. Like it's, it's very not obvious what white's plan is at this point. So I kind of wanted to avoid something like this, although I would play it if, if we had to. Um, so I went knight d2, and this is kind of a, just a flexible move. Like I'm improving the knight. I haven't 100% committed to castling queenside, although it's, it's definitely likely. And uh, I haven't yet committed to g4, so there's no h5 just yet. Oh yeah, if black castles and then goes h5, that's um, that's definitely possible. So here, here, yeah, they can play h5, but I think it's a lot more it's a lot more dangerous with the king on on g8. So for example, there's like bishop g5. And then rook g1. And threatening to take, or just threatening to take right now. Yeah, so let's say like this. Bishop takes. And just castles. And then rook g1, and okay, looks like. Yeah, looks like a really nice attack for white. And 
Knight H4 somewhere. Yeah, Knight F5 stuff. Yeah, yeah. So once Black Castles, I think it's a lot harder to deal with G4. I think there was um Ari Geisy game like this where his opponent played h5, which I think is uh, the best move. And then he went b3. So this is what I was going to do during the game, because I felt like this is a, a nice plan. And that game, if I remember correctly, went bishop h6, take, take. And then I think he either castled here or he just went like queen b2. And then he got like a3, b4. And then eventually castles kingside, f4, and Arjun won. Very nice game. So that was going to be kind of my my approach here if we got that. Maybe white can just play a3 here. Maybe queen b2 is not really needed yet. But, um, but yeah, so instead after knight d2, uh, black ended up castling here. So I was very happy to see this because now we get g4. And uh, and now in h5, I think I just take here. Like now it's just uh, g follows opening. So this would be super, uh, super scary for black. Rook dg1 and doubling rooks. Although it's possible there are other moves here as well. Maybe just castles. So yeah, now it starts to look fantastic for white. Because we're just getting this easy attack on the king side. And uh, it's actually really hard for black to do anything. Because they've played b6. And now any kind of c6, it just does very little. It just gives up, gives up a lot of squares. Hey, Chess Latte, how's it going? Where in the world is Chess Latte? Um, okay, now Black played King H8, um, which did not surprise me, nor did his next move. I went castles, knight g8. Um, because I looked at a lot of the kids' games, and I'd saw, I'd seen, I'd saw that he opted for this plan a lot, like this Aronian style, king h8, knight g8. Like, he did this in a lot of blitz games. So it wasn't a surprise to me that he he went for it here, but... It's uh, it doesn't quite work out. I mean, Black is just trying to get f5 in at any at any cost, but it's it's quite a lot. H4 and uh, yeah, now if f5, I think I'm just playing h5 and and Black's just not in time. Hg is a huge threat. Um, I think I was looking at this line f4. Let's say takes. Threatening mate, h6, take here, bc, and um, I was considering a couple moves, like rook g1, I thought g5 is also very tempting, just to play on on the light squares, like queen goes back, and then maybe bishop g4, and yeah, just strategically, this bishop is, is terrible, so if white just gets some some light square blockade, it's, it's going to be real bad. Just in the long run. You have end games where the king just like walks in and just wins. Um, so. Yeah, I was feeling pretty good here. Um, then he went knight a6. Which honestly like great move, right? Because he's not letting me kind of get rid of this bishop at the right moment which could saddle him with, with some bad pieces. Um, and yeah, given the circumstances, it's kind of kind of the best black can do. Okay, so now I went h5. And uh, I 
think it's reasonable. I don't know. Maybe there are other moves. King b1 or something. Um, knight b4 I didn't think was a huge problem. I can go either queen b1 or queen b3. Um, I think I was going to go queen b1. And then just play a3 somewhere and... Yeah, I wasn't too, um, too afraid of this. Just lots of you're in Japan. That's awesome. I uh, I still want to visit Japan. I've never, I've never been. But it looks amazing. Um, so black played bishop f6. And uh, yeah, now I felt like it was a critical moment because he wants to go bishop g5. If you, can, if you can trade these bishops like this and get his queen in it, I actually wasn't totally sure how successful the attack was going to be. So, I feel like I came up with a pretty interesting solution. I don't think it was best. I think uh, Compi just wanted to ignore it, just like rook g1, bishop g5. And uh, this one. Which is kind of, uh, it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. I think it might even be like double exclam sick. Um, okay, so EF4, this, this much is like, I feel like this attack makes sense. Got e5, takes queen g6, queen e7, bishop d3. Okay, this I can understand. White is getting white is getting some real play. Rook f7, d6, and the knight comes in. This I can understand. Um but like f4. Honestly, it didn't even cross my mind, right? Because like bishop takes, it. but apparently takes takes, and then g five. So apparently this is super strong. Um, knight f three. I guess this is coming, like just doubling on the h file and then taking. And uh, yeah, fair enough. Actually, like, how does Black get out of this, right? Like. You can't go f6. Moving the knight doesn't really help. So yeah, I th like once you see this position, all right, it's uh, it's kind of cool. This is chess space. I'm in chess space because I. I like to use you know my my actual computer to analyze the games. Um, so yeah, very very cool solution. That's definitely one that like wasn't. Certainly wasn't obvious. And this was, I think this was my first, like, this was definitely my first, like, long think of the game. Like, I spent a lot of time here because Bishop G5 is coming. Why not with a pen, a notebook, and a board? Did Jesse Cry write that? What? Who's, <laughs> who's, who's under Chess Latte's account? <laughs> What's happening? Uh, well, it just takes too long, buddy. <laughs> I want to save my analysis. I want to make the moves. You know, I don't want to write them down. You know? I mean, chess is about your analytical skill. It's not about your hand speed. You know? Jesse, he's a very fast writer. He's a philosopher. You know? He's been writing for years and 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 years. 
many, many years. Um, so yeah, this is a very cool idea here, bishop g5, f4. So okay, apparently best move for black is to throw knight b4 in, which um, actually makes sense. Because then queen is forced somewhere. Let's say queen b1, ef. What happens here? Here, bishop f6, take. E5. So this is somewhat. Oh, because here black is covering the d5 square. So we in this line we don't have. Also we don't have bishop d3. Okay, here white has to play. Just simple move bishop f2, bringing the bishop back and. Okay, apparently it's very. Very strong attack, but yeah, crazy position. Hey, Captain's Ketchup, how's it going? Hey, Chess Pond. I'm I'm back in Los Angeles. I've I've been back several days. Uh, we have this conversation every day. I, uh, Vegas is over. We're recapping the games from Vegas. But yeah, we're going over going over the games. But yeah, the trip is over. This is now after the fact. Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. I figured you were confused. I figured. Okay, so this, this okay would still be, I think, a, a pretty serious mess, but apparently white is doing well. Um, so knight b four, queen d one might be stronger. Okay, but then takes, check. F6 takes takes knight F3. No, I'm visiting uh, my folks here. Yeah, Vis visiting visiting. You know, sometimes people uh, go places like temporarily. Yeah, still living in in St. Louis. Yeah, I don't just move like randomly, like every every two months, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like before St. Louis, you know, I was living in Northern California for uh, about six years, so it was quite some time. Okay, so this would have been possible. And white is doing well here, which um, it's not hard to believe. Uh, international tournaments, no, no plans at the moment. I would like to though. I have been itching to kind of play um, in Europe again. It would be fun, but but no concrete plans yet. Oh, there's tons of avocado toast. I mean, Los Angeles is yeah, big hub for avocado toast. Oh man, don't even get me started. I mean, too late. I've already started. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, no, great. Lots of avocado toast and, and smoothies here. Big fan, big fan of the. Vegas too, actually. Vegas had had some real good avocado toast. So yeah, this one would be nice for white. Avocado rice, huh? Interesting. What kind of rice? Okay. 
Okay, so let's say take, queen takes, queen f6, queen d2. G5, I don't know. Is e5 a thing? Oh, but queen g6, and there's, there's awkwardness, huh? So this would be, this would be what they call a black move. Pretty, pretty serious blunder. Jasmine, nice, nice. And rice, what a treat. So e5, maybe not amazing right away, but a3 first. And then if the knight goes back, then yeah, then this would just be, this would be crushing. Knight f takes. And... Yeah, white's position would be fantastic. So yeah, very interesting solution. I mean, this is a high level idea, huh? Knight b4. Queen d1 takes check and f3 and yeah black is in big trouble apparently there's other moves as well that do the same thing so rook h2 bishop g5 yeah, again, f4, knight b4, queen b1, take, check, here, hg, fg. Oh, but here why would get rook, so rook h2 may be even a better, uh, a better option, because I get rook dh1 at the end. Because why do I need the rook on g1 here? Then rook f7, e5, takes, queen g6 maybe, bishop f2 first, let's say queen g6 here, bishop f2, and... yeah, this is very annoying for black. So rook h2 maybe was the most interesting way of dealing with black's so-called threat, huh? Bishop g5, f4. Bishop takes, 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 hg, e5, queen opens up. We have rook h1. Yeah, this, this would have been pretty serious. Um, okay, well, I'll show you guys what I did. I went takes, takes, and uh, knight f3. So I, didn't, I didn't see this f4 idea, right? I didn't realize how strong it was. But it's very good, I think, especially against this knight on g8. Um, but I went for this one, which I thought was interesting, because, okay, I'm stopping bishop g5. Um, and the only, the only problem with this move is that g-pawn is hanging. That's, that's basically it. Um, but after bishop takes g4, my point was I get rook dg1. And now the g6 pawn is hanging. So bishop h5 I thought would be pretty awkward. I was thinking knight g5 here, for example, looks looks pretty annoying for black. Uh, with idea bishop takes e2, rook h7. Thank you very much. Um, so takes, takes. And uh, yeah, I thought... I thought this position was should be better for white. Like I sacked a pawn, but I just have two very active rooks and I want to build up like rook h3, rook h1, um, bishop g4, bishop e6. And it looked, looked very, very unpleasant um, to me for black. What level would you have to be to play that over the board? I don't know, certainly above my level. Um, so you mean like rook h2, bishop g5, f4? I would say somewhere between 24 and 3,600 is my best guess. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure the the strong GMs find this one, the 2,600s and up. Maybe even not that high. 
it's hard to say, you know, it's above my level for sure, but I don't know. I don't know how much. Oh, you read John Watson. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a great book. Secrets of Modern Chess Strategy. That's a classic. Five. This is just this one is in particular GG because there was no knight before even so this is just uh, this is like really GG like yeah by the way threatening queen takes h7 not rook takes Rook takes would be a real shame. Queen takes would be the threat. So, okay, I think this one ended up working out well. Rook g1, uh, takes, takes. But um, I definitely ended up screwing this up. So bishop g7, and then queen e2. Because I didn't want to allow bishop g4... Knight f6, actually, I was worried about. Bishop e6, knight h5. Where black gets to bring the knight out. Apparently, this is not... Nothing to fear, huh? Queen d1. Compi says. And then getting ready to just take, actually. Oh, okay. So queen f6, let's say. Bishop f5, wow. Yeah, that's a move, huh? Takes, queen h5 is winning, apparently. Yeah, h6, uh, rook g6. Or, um, or bishop takes, actually. Pretty simple. Yeah, bishop f5 is kind of a, a sickle move. Because you're also threatening to just take... Queen f7 it's a defense, but then white just takes anyway. Rook h1. And then this is kind of... It's pretty serious, huh? Yeah. So that would be winning. So yeah, I didn't really... Uh, I didn't really anticipate this one. Queen d1 and then rook takes h5. Queen e2, I think, is probably also fine. Just allows knight f4 with tempo. But then anyway, okay, take, I, I would play. Rook takes, rook g6. This is pretty good, actually. Rook h4. g g1, very nice move. Just defending. Yeah, this would be good. But I guess queen d1, knight f4. Rook g6. Okay, that's actually ridiculous. Like Steinitz level, Steinitz level mental hospital diseased. Sick. Like literal straitjacket, a beautiful mind. Brought Levy, Rubenstein, insanity. We got to work on our chest, folks. You know, we got to work on our chest. We're just not good enough. We're just not good enough. So that's why queen d1 and not queen e2. Because queen e2, knight f4 hits the queen with tempo. And as much as you would like rook takes g6 to work here, <laughs> this was with a check. <laughs> Even if it wasn't with a check, I don't I don't see how I... How I <laughs> 
how white would win. But yeah. Dang. I think for sure black is blundering this. I think most players are going to go knight f4. Eh, I don't know. He's a kid. Probably sees this kind of tactics all the time. Man. That's sick though. Hmm. Yeah. That's a double x slam. Like that's a brilliant move. Yeah. Not like your recapture to peace brilliant move you guys sometimes get on just <laughs> You can make only move in the position. Oh, brilliant move. Or you left your rook hanging. You didn't even realize it. it turned out to be a good idea. A brilliant move. No, no, this is this is a real double X clam. No offense. No offense. <laughs> hey, you managed not to lose four and a half points of material for once <laughs> you play this game at 2200 level <laughs> yeah this is a nice puzzle this is very nice of course the, the shame is that bishop f4 this is also winning not as winning but white gets pretty big advantage But this is just, hmm, that's beautiful, huh? Okay, so yeah, clearly I underestimated my bishop being on e6. You know, I wasn't kind of, wasn't really looking, because I was just trying to build up build up the attack, right? So queen e2, so I, I wanted to uh, just defend the bishop, not block the rook, right? So black doesn't have time for knight f6, because uh, g-pawn is hanging. Uh, but anyway, queen e8, knight b5. Which might actually not be a great idea. I mean, I just wanted to remind Black of this weakness, but whoops. But I don't know if this was that, because then e4 pawn is looser. I went knight f6, went rook h4, queen f7. Yeah, it actually wasn't so easy here. So I don't know about knight b5. Maybe uh, I should have done something else. Rook h3. Rook h1. We got this, knight f6, rook h4, queen f7. And I played this one. And then, uh, yeah, I totally didn't expect his next move. Uh, he goes knight takes d5. Very surprising, honestly. <laughs> I thought I'm just taking on h7, right? But actually, it's not so simple. Like, rook h7, king g8, and then... It's not that clear for white. But it turns out that it's not a great position for black either. Because um, he keeps his extra pawn. I'm still a pawn down. But now h-file is open, king on g8 is weak, and bishop on g7 is still kind of a bad piece. So I was thinking about the end game. Because I, I thought it'd be better here. Like, I can put my king on e2, bring my rooks back, go rook c1 somewhere. I thought I'm, you know, I'm definitely the one kind of pressing, but I am a pawn down. And then I was also thinking, like, why why trade queens if I don't have to? Like, black's king is still, is still weak. So, queen c4. Apparently, Compi really likes queen c2, which I don't get. Okay, knight c5, let's say. Take. Take. Knight c7. Okay, fair enough. Knight's coming to e6. So on queen c4, black could go knight c5, huh? So take, take. 
here and yeah queen is better on c2 rook b8 knight e6 rook f7 okay not an easy position maybe rook h2 defending the pawn g4 oh it's not good king b1 Take Queen C one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Queen C one is uh hard move to find. At least from, from afar. Uh, but yeah, I guess queen c2 is just a little, right, a little safer. Yeah. Why did I want queen c4? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, queen c2, I mean, I just didn't want to, uh... I just didn't want to get hit with knight b4. Like, why would you want this? But, uh, okay, I guess you can take... Rook c8 is not a thing, right? Because rook g7. Yeah, I can't say I really looked into this very deep. Queen c4, only move. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So <laughs> it's, it's an interesting question. So queen c2, you have to see that on knight b4, you can take here. All right, so you have to see this one. Um, yeah, let's see if black sacks on eight. No, but there's no time, right? Because, oh, I'm sorry. It's check. It's check. You're right. You're right. So take here. Rook c8. I guess we, we got this pawn. So we're still happy as white are now. D6, B6 are hanging. So maybe just king B1. Uh, should be nice for white. Knight e6 is coming. All these pawns are weak. We got a3. White's king is safe now. But yeah, it's kind of hard to see all this, isn't it? Queen c4, rook f7, played rook 7 back, apparently this was better, now that's weird, because I felt like my rook here is kind of under attack, so queen g2, oh rook g3, excuse me, excuse me, queen is just trapped, huh, I didn't really see that. Queen g4, rook g3. Ah. Oh. And then I get my rook h1. You know, I was looking for a way to bring both rooks back because I didn't want a rook on h7 anymore. It's like not doing anything. Now I want both rooks on the g file so I can just take this and then go bishop h6 and win the game. Um, so. Yeah, so basically what I realized in this position is that I want this rook back here, right, on g1. So I, like an idiot, brought that rook back. Where, of course, obviously, you know, I want both rooks back, right? So instead of bringing this one back, what I should have done was go rook 1 h3, bringing this one forward, seeing that the queen is forced to the g file, then I'm getting rook g3, and then this rook goes back to h1 so obvious once you once you see it so obvious <laughs> it's 
So yeah, I had right idea, right idea, but uh, wrong execution, huh? I mean, it honestly makes sense, like, because here, black played queen g2, and I don't have rook g3, right? So it's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> good point, you know, good point. Uh, of course, I was hoping for queen g4 when, yeah, then I get, then I get this position, which is just, oh, okay, I can even take right away, right? And then, yeah, rook g1, bishop h6, this would just be game over for black, no way to... No way to hold, you know, open king like this. So yeah, that's nice. I honestly just... Yeah, I didn't really consider, because I just thought queen g2, and I didn't see, like, rook g3, actually. Queen is trapped. So I need to, need to think about that moment. Sometimes I like to just visualize, because I can kind of remember, like, playing the game and just trying to review what I was possibly thinking about, you know, <laughs> during the game. It's also kind of nice to, like, imagine yourself visualizing the right moves, you know, thinking about how it would feel to have seen the right, the right sequence. See, I played the fishy rook 7 h3, like a total fish. Rook g3. And then my queen on c4 is actually a genius, right? Because it's covering it's covering f1 square. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been nice. Okay, well we went here. Queen g2. Now went back. Queen f3. Rook g1. So I am still getting my rooks in, but it's actually not quite fast enough because now knight c5. And uh, pawn on e4 is hanging. And then I thought if I go knight c3 here, there's b5, which there is. So. I didn't like this, but maybe this is what I should have done. So it takes ninety four rook g two, huh? Yeah, that's hard. That's rough. Yeah, I definitely did not want to just allow my king to get opened up like this, but maybe it's not a big deal. I guess this would be nice for white. Yeah, so I played rook h4. Like, because defending the pawn and I'm not allowing b5 and now I want rook g3. And, uh... Yeah, I thought I'm very close now. Um, I ended up winning the game, like, Bishop f6, I went here. Queen is not really trapped yet, but it's it's getting close. Rook g7. And now I start just bringing my pieces back, because I'm basically, I just want to get like rook g3 and just completely kick black's queen around. Um, so he played here. Queen e2. Yeah, now I'm just like going after this queen. Oops. Queen h5. And now I found kind of a nice way to end the game. Queen f3, hitting the bishop and also throwing rook h1, where black's queen is just totally caught. I thought the best try is rook f8, rook h1, and now bishop uh, g5. He doesn't have bishop h4. I guess he doesn't have anything, but it, bishop h4, I had seen this kind of funny way to win. Queen takes f8 and then rook h h4. And I'm getting the queen back for the rook, and I also, I snagged a piece, so white's going to end up piece up. Kind of funny, funny queen trap line. Um, 
And then bishop g5, I thought, is a is a tricky try. Because a lot of stuff is hanging in white's position. Um, but I actually have a very simple rook takes h5 here, rook takes f3, and then rook hg5. And yeah, it's just a piece up again. So that wasn't working for black. Um, he went bishop h4, kind of the only other way to cover the h-file, but this one was pretty simple. Rook h1, he goes g5, and uh, rook h takes h4. I think chess.com gave this one a brilliant, very undeservingly, because this is just this is just simple tactics. You know, rook g7 and queen is hanging. So that was game. Uh, we played a couple more moves, but there wasn't wasn't much wasn't much after this. Yeah, so this one is a lot simpler than the other, <laughs> like that rook takes g6. Um, but actually, so I skipped one moment. Black had Black had a defense here. Black had only one move to actually completely keep the game messy and unclear. So oh, you guys have some idea? <laughs> I think the beach is really for good play. Yeah, that's probably fair. Probably to encourage. But hey, there's X clamps, you know. You could just make it, I think you could make it a little harder to get a double X clamp on the side. <laughs> I think you could make it a little harder. Yeah, that, that's what you have the X clamp for. You know, not every move has to be to be double double x clam okay black's move here is a double x clam because black has only one move to uh to keep the game in balance and i can tell you it was not a move i considered here and my guess is my opponent didn't either because it's, it's a pretty it's a pretty wild move yeah black to play here black to play White wants to go rook g3 or rook hg4 and harass the queen. And if white is given one move, which happened in the game, basically white consolidates and uh, black is just busted. So yeah, it was like really now or never for black in this moment. Yeah, rook f4. Sokola, very good. Rook f4. So this would have actually created counterplay. It's a thematic move. I mean, King's Indian Rook F4, this is like classic stuff. You know, Gligorich, we've known about this one for many years. Um, but just in this moment, yeah, it, it just wasn't on my mind. I don't think my opponent thought about it either. But um, it's super, super strong. 
So if I take, number one, one idea is that rook g3, black gets to go queen e4, right? So the queen gets this escape, right? Which is very, very nice. Apparently this is not super clear. Takes rook e4, rook h1. Okay, white's down two pawns, but we got rook g6, rook g1 coming. So it it's still a very unclear position. Um, but yeah, on rook f4, if bishop takes ef, so e pawn hangs. You have knight d3 check coming. And knight d3 also hits b2, right? So now the bishop is alive. And uh, yeah, like, honestly, I hate white's position here. Because white's rooks are just strewn about randomly. Like, no coordination whatsoever. And... Uh, like, for example, rook takes g6, I think knight d3 check wins immediately. Because king c2, there's queen e2, and queen takes b2. White's just getting maiden. King d2, oh, we can take, and we can win the rook, or we can go queen f1 check and win the queen. So... Some pretty, pretty serious tactics. Um, does thematic mean common to the position? Yeah, it means common to the opening or common to like the pawn structure. I would say in this case, whenever you have a bishop on g7 and you can play rook f4 and try to open up the bishop with an exchange sacrifice, actually it should be a move that you're very often considering in this kind of position, especially with like white's king castled queenside. But chess is a hard game. This is move 30, you know, and, and there are some lines actually where this rook f4, it's like, it's part of theory. It's played on like move 15 and it's like a theoretical idea. Um, like it's part of opening theory, but you know, deep in the middle game, of course you forget, you forget about these ideas. It definitely didn't, didn't cross my mind, but it's super strong because black awakens all of their pieces. White loses a lot of stability with the dark sword bishop, and now queen f2 is coming, queen takes b2. So rook g4, knight d3 check, d2. Okay, I mean, it is, it's very messy, but this is not what white wanted, you know, from the position of just a couple of moves ago. I wanted control, I wanted, you know, <laughs> the advantage. this is just like, you know, here I have to grovel basically, give back the exchange and and hope not to hope not to lose three pawns down. Okay, it'll be two pawns, it'll be two pawns. You need a good book to learn positional motives. There's um there's quite a few out there. My personal favorite uh, was the positional chess handbook. That one has a lot of very classic positional ideas. Yeah, of course, if you know if you know this position is like an only move kind of situation, what else, right? I mean, rook f4 is really the only thing. But yeah, the problem is you don't know during the game. No one's no one's telling you like, oh, you gotta. You have one move here that works, you know, <laughs> it's like during the game, sometimes you're just, you're thinking it's bad no matter what, or you don't have anything special. And yeah, you just find like the first kind of normal move you can think of. Um, but yeah, that would have been a very cool moment for black if they had found that. Yeah, really, I think rook g1 here was not right. I think this made things too complicated. I feel like knight c3, knight c5. Now what? Now maybe rook h4. So here rook f4. 
Yeah, with the knight on c3, rook f4 doesn't work because we've got this one. And then this one. That's nice. That's what I call nice. Because here knight's on c3, so e4 is defended. That's the big difference. So I should have pulled this knight back sooner. Okay, so that's the game. Um, if anyone has any questions, now would be the time. On. So here we should have, uh, here we had this one. This is one idea you can try to remember from this game, this F4 sack. Super, super strong. E5. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. That would have been good. So takes, takes. Takes, takes. Oh, then we could have realized that the bishop would have been a lot stronger on e6 and that. Knight. Well, we knew that, but on that h5, yeah, we definitely maybe could have anticipated some of these rook takes h. I'm not going to blame myself for not seeing, uh, you know, knight f4, rook takes g6. Okay, I mean, you know, I'm only human. Um, but. Okay, maybe it's a cool idea. Yeah, worth worth taking away as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, okay. And then all right, then we had the genius Rick H three, Rick G three which would have been which would have made our life a lot easier cuz it it expels black's queen sooner and then white gets rook g1 and yeah g pawn just falls and fantastic position okay and said so we got this one black had one moment here to save the game rook f4 said allowed white to connect the rooks Consolidate and that was it. That was it. Yeah, MG Weirdo, good to see you again. Folks, I'm going to grab some water real quick and uh, I'll be back. Yeah, I like this finish, for sure. Okay, BRB, one sec. Yeah. So that's this game. Um, also, this was two wins in a row for the tournament, so so that was cool. After a kind of a rough rough start, like half out of two. Um, round round five was tough though. Round five was a uh, very sharp game. Um, we'll see if we get through, I don't know if we'll get through all of it, but we'll see how much, how much.
much we can we can cover tonight. Um, have I ever played the Auerbach uh, as D4 against the kid? Um, maybe I played it a couple times in Blitz. Honestly, not. I haven't played it uh, too much. I mostly mostly faced it as black. Um. So yeah, this game, another King's Indian. So this is three King's Indians in a row. So two games is black. One game is white. Uh, so yeah, sometimes that happens. Just every game, <laughs> every game just goes into goes into King's Indian. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind. I mean, uh, you know, most interesting positions in chess for me. King B two. So here the opening was very sharp. C5, knight e2, bishop a6, b3, e6, and uh, white castles, which honestly looks uh, insane. <laughs> Unless, you know, you've like checked this position with the engine. So I had a feeling like my opponent had maybe prepare this because uh, I don't know. I think it's very, very risky to castle queenside and play b3, you know, with like the center still open. And we have this like almost Benoni type of structure. I mean, this is extremely, extremely risky. Um, but these days you can get away with a lot of stuff. So knight c6. Bishop h6. And I played e5 here. I wasn't like 100% in book, like I checked this recently, but I was pretty familiar with the way that black is supposed to kind of try to create counterplay here. Because now the idea is to fight for the d4 square. So d, e, d, e. White went 95. And now I went B5. Which I think is is very reasonable. I don't know if it's the best move. I'm just gonna maybe I'll let Compi run here for a sec. Cause I feel like there there were some options here. But B5 made sense to me. It's definitely an idea um, I've seen before. Maybe even best move. Maybe even best move. Although there's options here. Bishop takes h6, knight takes d5, knight d4. All these moves are very reasonable. So let's see. I don't know. Maybe this one. He takes. Knight d4, knight takes, pawn takes, h4. See, this is the kind of thing I don't know. I would I would be very uncertain. Take, take. I guess we have queen f6 only move. Bishop d3, rook a. A lot of only moves black has to find in this line. A lot of only moves. You know, not exactly the healthiest, the healthiest opening win. You have to know exactly how to defend. But, um, okay, I guess this would be quite quite reasonable for black. I don't know. This is another option. Takes, takes, knight d4. Takes, takes. Then white goes h4 and, okay, we have nothing better than knight d5 going into that other line. So, unless I want to go into this position, which actually feels like a little drawish, does seem like b5 maybe is the only way to kind of keep things interesting. So take, take. Um, but then white white found very strong move bishop g5, or at least very annoying move. Just pulling the bishop back and now creating this pin. 
And now white wants to go like queen e3, for example, and uh, it's very hard to deal with this. Actually, one line I was looking at here during the game, I thought about bishop takes e2. And I was very concerned about queen takes. Turning knight takes f6. Because if knight d4, white has queen a6. I was calculating this during the game, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I, I have no move. Uh, f6 is hanging, and if knight e6 to cover the queen, there's knight takes f6 check, and we lose the... Uh, we lose the queen. That said, this is maybe not like totally clear. We do get a rook and piece, which is good. Um, it's here. Bishop c4. Well, it's not enough for black. It's not enough, but maybe it would be um, at least, I don't know, playable, but, but very, very big advantage for white. So, this looks very scary. Apparently, a5 here is uh, is okay, which is surprising, because this also gives the queen. So let's say take, take, rook d8 here. Yeah, here black looks a lot more active. Why would probably just have to give the queen back and get something like this. Okay, this would still be pretty unclear. But the funny thing is on bishop e2, actually, I think bishop e2 is better for white. The knight d4, bishop c4, and... Uh, Yes, bishop is just very strong. Queen d6 takes. And, uh, well, we both have a good knight on the d file, but white structure is better and the bishop is definitely better. So, okay, there would still be, still be a position to play. So yeah, that was possible, but I decided against it because I was very concerned about this queen e2. I didn't see like a5. I didn't see I can just like give my queen and I'm, I'm totally fine. You know, that was <laughs> not, not obvious to me. Um, I actually found best move according to uh, the computer, which I think was very not obvious in this position. Rook b8. But the idea is that I'm defending the bishop, um, which allows me to play knight d4. Because if knight d4 here, white just takes. And with the rook on b8, I can take back. That's the whole point. But without rook b8, if the bishop is hanging. And if I take here, there's knight c6 in between move and, and black loses. Black can just resign because we're going to be a piece down. Um, so rook b8, and now if like queen e3, for example, I can go knight d4, covering the d-file, and here I think black is actually doing really well. We're going to go queen d6, unpin, and then white's king is like super, super exposed. So he went h4, which uh, actually very... Very strong and direct move, wanting to play h5, open up the h file. Um, I went knight d4, h5. Now bishop takes e2, bishop takes e2. And yeah, game gets very sharp here. So this moment, black has an only move, which I think is 
difficult to find. Although it doesn't really feel like an only move uh, situation. So I play Rook takes B3, which is uh, looks strong. It looks good, but I I didn't actually think I'm in. I'm doing well here. And. Uh, Yeah, it's funny. This move is bad, but not for the reasons that I thought <laughs> or that was played in the game, but for different reasons. Okay, now if white takes just immediately, then knight takes. This I think is totally fine for black. So knight d2. I was thinking rook takes d2, queen a5. Here white has a lot of material for the queen, but... uh. Rook bait is coming and white's king is kind of in trouble. So I thought like this, for example, take, take, rook b8. And uh, it looked like black is actually getting there first. Um, so this was not a problem. But in the game, white goes bishop c4, which I thought was very strong. Turns out not to be the best move, but to me it looked very, very straightforward or very reasonable. Just improving the bishop, hitting the rook, lining it up against my king. And now, I mean, there's like HG is coming and it's very, very scary. Um, apparently, white should have just taken like this, which actually makes a lot of sense. Because now if I go hg, now there's 97 mate looming over black's head. So <laughs> got to be very, very careful here. So in this line, takes, rook takes. Here I think black is kind of busted. That's why starting knight takes f6. So we can't move the queen because of 97. So like queen e8 has to be played. Bishop b5, oof. This would be very difficult, I think, for black. Bishop d7, oof. Oof. Takes, 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 takes. Either takes or rook a1. And white, white has uh, good winning chances, very good winning chances. Okay, that's kind of hard to see, but... Apparently that was possible. So other than rook takes b3, I mean, it's very hard to find uh, find a move here for black. Um, engine gives h6, which, yeah, can't say I really thought about this one. <laughs> just giving, just giving the pawn. So like, knight f6, bishop f6, takes. So here black goes rook b3, and the point is it's like now I'm not getting mated. But yeah, this is uh, hard to understand. G engine gives rook b4. Covering c4 square and <laughs> threatening queen a5. No, I mean, once you see it, once you see it, okay. It starts to make sense. Black's king is safe and white's king is not. Queen a5 coming, rook b7. So yeah, h6 is kind of one of those, uh, one of those sicko moves. But amazing move, I mean, maybe... Maybe we can try to understand this one. Now, of course, can't take because then there's 92 check. Black wins a piece, but this is also possible. So bishop c4. Oh, and then bishop g5, yeah. 83, rook b4, and black's getting some real play. Black's getting some real play. Hey, chest for coffee. Yeah, I mean, very cool move, h6. It, like, 
Hard to explain exactly. I mean, I guess it stops black from getting mated. Because in all in the game, it's like HG is a big problem. And then after HG, H file is open. Or if I go FG, then there's bishop c4. So. Yeah, h6 is a real, real brilliancy, I would say. Yeah, yeah, hard to imagine finding this move, but. Yeah, the other thing actually, so on h6, I think I just realized if takes takes here, rook b3, if bishop takes f8, how is bishop g5? Dang. Man. Yeah, engine just kind of sees everything, huh? Very unfair. Okay, so instead this, this. D1. Knight takes D2. Queen A5 and black is doing well. Take, take. B2, rook C8. Okay, so rook takes b3, white should have taken here. That would have been very strong. Instead, he played here. And then we went back rook b6. So my idea was I'm trying to defend the, the knight on f6, which I thought was in trouble. And then I'm offering the exchange, because knight takes b6, I thought, honestly, either queen takes or pawn takes was was giving black good compensation. We get rook b8 coming next. It seemed very annoying for white to deal with this. So you take, take. Bishop h6, rook b8 already. This is bad news for white. Um, but this was bad actually because I blocked the queen. And then uh, white takes, and then goes queen f2, very strong move, and now he's getting queen h4, and I'm just not in time to create a successful counterplay. So rook b6, I think, was a howler, real mistake. Uh, what was better, rook b7? Because here in the same line, if takes takes, there's there's no queen f2 because black gets queen a5. And black is actually first. Queen a3 check, and this is just, just brutal for white. If takes, there's going to be queen c3. So takes, takes, we're one move for mate, but queen c3. Just ends the game. So I was probably worried about something like this, bishop h6. There's knight h5, and yeah, it's all kind of covered. There's no rook takes h5, because just gh. This would have been nice for black. Bishop a6. Yeah, rook b6. Rook b3 is a move. Rook d7. A lot of moves for black. Let's say rook b8. Easy move. And then we just want c4. We just want open lines. And uh, we're not getting mated. We're not getting mated. So... This was the game, queen f2, I went rook b4. Just trying to create counterplay because I realize now I'm just getting mated. Queen h4 is coming. 
and I can't move my queen because there's a 97 check. That's, that's the other thing about rook b7. It covers uh, the 97 mate. So the queen is free to move. Man, what a sharp position. I mean, it's like such a small difference. But rook on b7, black is better. Rook on b6, black is lost. Black is better. Black is lost. Better. Lost. <laughs> oh, I guess white can take here. I think this is the best try. And note that queen h6, there's bishop g5. Um, however, rook h6 is possible. Bishop g5, 97 check. Wow. He's threatening this one. So king g7. Get some insane line. Oh my god, what a line. Rook h1, this check, and as usual, draw. Move 32, just in time. Just in time. So that would have been an interesting finish. Yeah, rook b7, this would have been... Then white has to find a bunch of only moves just to save the game, actually. So, But that's very hard. I don't think a lot of people are going to find uh, takes, takes, takes with the bishop, and then rook h6, like, allowing bishop g5, because you've seen 97 check. Like, that's just not... <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. So rook b7, I think we're just winning the game. I think maybe we get something like takes, takes, bishop h6, knight h5, and then. Okay. Would we'll still be pretty sharp. Let's see, bishop g5, b6. Oh, but then this one's coming. Yeah. That's pretty serious. Once the rook fb8. Uh, once rook fb8 happens and then rook b1, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty serious. Um, okay, I'll show you guys what happened. So here, takes, takes, queen f2, we went back. He takes, takes, king b1. Yeah, I was just trying to create counterplay. Um, bishop h6. Actually, there was some, some more intrigue to, to this game. Bishop h6 wasn't best. Um, but neither was our, our response b3. Apparently we should have taken. Brought white's rook in. And gone king g7 or rook c8. Okay, kind of surprising. Rook h1, rook c8. Knight h5 coming. Okay, black has compensation. Black has compensation. Knight on d4 is very strong. Yeah, this is what we should have done. We should have traded these bishops and gone king g7. Because there's no mate. If white, if white doubles on the h file, there's no, there's no threat here. So black can play for a counterplay. Queen c6. Maybe rook c8. Or, oof, crazy lines, more, more insanity. But yeah, would be, I think, basically impossible to play this position. Uh, perfect. We just get some, some mess. So, yeah, this part I think I'll have to go back and look through because we very much. Very much messed it up because we we allowed white to get queen e3. Now queen h6 is. This is why we wanted the rook on h6 so that white doesn't have time to. Go for this thing. I had to go knight g8. And then. Uh, yeah, white was able to consolidate basically. Yeah, actually there was even more more drama here, but. Probably we'll have to save it for another time. 
but yeah, still quite a bit to analyze in this game, actually. But yeah, White ended up winning uh, with the extra exchange. Wasn't able to generate enough chances. And yeah, it was kind of a bummer after this one, because after this one, we were back down to an even score. But, uh... Ooh, sharp game. Already a lot of moments. They're very interesting. Like this h6 thing. And then bring the rook back to b7. That would have been that would have been a good find. All right, folks, um, I think we're going to start wrapping it up. Unless anyone has any, any questions or something. But uh, we went through just one and a half games. We'll have to finish up this one tomorrow. But that's the plan. Just going to keep analyzing a little bit um, every day. Uh, that's been my regimen. I've been doing... I've been working on the King's Indian course uh, a couple hours every uh, every morning. Hey, Baymon, thanks for the bits. Much appreciated. I've been doing the King's Indian course. That's actually very close to coming out. At least the starter repertoire, model games, and a uh, bunch of exercises. So that'll be fun for the Dojo training program. Um, and then, yeah, in the evenings, just been analyzing my games. So that's been that's been my balance. Morning, afternoon time, I'm working on dojo stuff, dojo work, managing the Discord, <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> Twitch. Then in the evening, try to get some game analysis in. And uh, yeah, just going to keep uh, keep working. Keep working and prepping for uh, future tournaments. Okay, uh, I think that's going to do it. Let's find, let's find someone to raid.